Om. This is a non-invasive brain-computer interface. Non-invasive BCIs have a ton of applications, from diagnosing epilepsy to assisting with meditation. They can capture EEG brainwaves using electrodes that can detect voltage fluctuations coming from the brain. However, a huge problem faced by these brain-computer interfaces is the presence of noise. Physiological noise, which comes from eye blinks and muscle movements, as well as external noise, which comes from the environment. The current methods to denoise these EEG brainwaves is usually done in two parts. Artifact detection, which figures out where the artifacts are, and artifact removal, which removes the artifacts. The problems with the current methods are that they're very computationally expensive, or they require a reference channel. Some of them only denoise one type of artifact. The paper, Denoising Time Series Data with Asymmetric Generative Adversial Networks proposes a fully automated end-to-end -end system for denoising EEGs. It can also be trained using unpaired training examples. Why is this important? Well, in terms of EEG data, we don't have clean versions of noisy EEG samples. We only have noisy EEG samples and clean EEG samples, meaning we can't use a regular supervised learning algorithm to do this. Fortunately for us, we have cyclogans. Let's say we want to map an image from domain A to domain B, say from zebras to horses. We'll have two generators, one for each domain. One is called F, which maps from domain A to domain B. The other one, G, maps from domain B to domain A. We'll have two discriminators, one for each domain, which basically ensures that the generated images are actually part of the domain they're supposed to be in. We'll also have two cycle consistency losses. The first one will ensure that f of g of a is as close as possible to a. This basically means that if we take an image of zebras, we map it to horses, and then we map it to zebras again. That picture should be as close as possible to the original image. It basically just means that we actually want those zebras to be changed into horses, not just generate some random picture of horses. In our case, a cycle GAN doesn't really work because when we're mapping from clean to noisy, how is the model supposed to know where the noise is supposed to go? We'll still have two domains, domain A for noisy and domain B for clean. We'll also have a generator mapping from A to B. But we won't exactly have a generator mapping from B back to A. We'll actually have a special generator, G of N, which basically extracts the noise if the image is from domain A or if it's noisy and adds in the noise if the image is from domain B or if it's clean. The losses and discriminators will work exactly as before. And since the forward and backward cycles are different, we call it an asymmetric get. To determine whether the network was successful or not, the researchers used two methods, one of which was to create a synthetic data set and the other was to use actual EEG recorded brainwaves. For the synthetic data set, the researchers added together sine and square waves, each with random periods. And to generate the noisy data set, they just took the clean brain waves or the clean synthetic brain waves and added sawtooth waves. And they trained the network on this data and they were able to achieve a mean squared error of 0 0.418. For the second method, researchers took a US Army research lab data set. The results were first measured qualitatively. The research data they took was when patients were asked to blink every two seconds. And we see here that GN was able to correctly extract that the patients were blinking every two seconds. Now to determine quantitative results, researchers trained an artifact detection model. Then it took that model and tried to detect artifacts in the denoised data from the asymmetric GAN. And by determining the error based on the percentage of windows that still contained artifacts, the AGAN was actually able to achieve an accuracy of 97.39%. So this asymmetric GAN is actually pretty crazy. It's the first end-to-end -end and fully aut automated system we've seen for denoising EEGs. And it's pretty good too, because it's accurate, doesn't require a reference channel, and isn't too computationally expensive. Feature work would be to try it on other types of artifacts and see how well it performs. So I'm super excited for what this has to bring for the future of brain-computer interfaces.